So what you just heard was the sound bar on the D5 playing at max volume on the that factory system. And then you heard it playing at max volume and it was twice as loud and twice as clear all because of this little black box that just plugs inside of the wiring in the dash and doubles the sound bar's performance. Stay tuned because I'm going to go into what makes this little box so special and why it makes the sound bar sound so good. And I'm also going to address the freaking speaker holes that don't have speakers in them on the D5. So the Evolution D5 came out in 2023 and people were extremely excited to see all the really cool features that came standard on it, including the sound bar that has LED lights. However, people were disappointed pretty quickly when they own their D5 because they realized that the sound bar looks a hell of a lot better than it sounds. But why is that? Well, you just heard it in the video that it can play twice as loud as it does stock, but the reason is it can't is because of this guy. The touchscreen has an audio output and that runs to the, the amp inside of the, the sound bar. And that sound bar then amplifies the signal. Well, the touchscreen's audio quality, the output audio quality, is very bad. It has a lot of feedback and whiny noise and just weird pops and all kinds of weird stuff. And it doesn't even produce full stereo sound, which is not mono, but it only produces the left channel of the stereo audio. So it's like it's made to do stereo, but it only produces left side. It doesn't produce the right side. Instead of relying on, just relying on the speaker holes with speakers to make the audio better, we wanted to do something that was even more simple and lower cost and easy to install. So we created this little guy. Wow. Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> and what this is, this is not just some black box with some wires on it. This is our soundbar boost box. It has two harnesses on it that plug right inside of the factory wiring inside the dash. And it also has this marine connector, which I'll get into what it does, and allows your sound bar to play twice as loud, twice as clean. It gets rid of the whiny noises that you hear when you're driving. It plays in full stereo and is very, very easy to install. You just need a screwdriver in literally five minutes. Only thing you need to install this is a screwdriver or an impact driver with a Phillips head bit. You'll need some zip ties and wire cutters. The zip ties will come with the boost box, don't worry. So all you really need is two tools. And I have a quick disclaimer, we do bypass the touchscreen. So if you love your FM radio, your AM radio, or you actually will use your USB audio and you have a bunch of music on a USB stick, you're gonna lose those functions. That touchscreen just doesn't produce quality audio and there's no point in adding better speakers. Some people think if you add better speakers, a better amp, that it makes your audio better. Well, that's true if you have a head unit that already produces really good audio signal. If your head unit doesn't produce good audio signal, you can put the best freaking amplifier and speakers in the world on it, and it's still gonna sound like crap if you have poor audio signal. I wasn't gonna feel comfortable selling them a system with all this cool audio equipment like Hertz and Memphis that sound great if they have good signal, but not gonna, not gonna sound great. And you're gonna have a bunch of noise because you're using your touchscreen as your head unit. I'm finished with my sermon. Let's install the boost box. Turn your card off. It's always a good first practice. You have two screws right here inside of the dash. Remove those. I like to put the screws back in there so they don't fall out. You wanna kinda pull this up at an angle like that to get it out. You kinda sometimes have to go pretty far because this has an arch on it. So you'll see it has like this arch. You almost have to have the, and this is actually how you put it back in too. You have to have it at an angle like that. So pull that out. There is one four pin connector only one that has four pins. So unplug those from each other, and then the one six pin connector you want, and don't mix these up, because they are very different wires. The six pin connector you want has labels on it that says 91, 92, 93, 94, it has labeled A and label B. That's what you want as well, and you want to unplug those from each other. You want to grab your beautiful boost box. I think it's easier to just set the boost box up here and you can't mess this part up. 
we everything's wired in a way where there's only one connector for each one of these to go in. So here, let's grab our four pin connectors first, our powers. We're gonna connect the male one inside of the female one on the cart. Now I'd recommend when you're pushing this down, to push it to one side, on the, the driver's side of the cart. Because if you ever upgrade to the D5100, that includes an amp that plugs right inside of this and the amp sticks down to the right side of the dash. So it helps give you space. So I'm gonna put this guy down here like so. And I'm gonna push this down. Now, I don't want any of this wiring. I'll give you a quick look to go in there, Storm. You can see that there's a, the brake mechanisms inside of there. I don't want this wiring getting involved with any of that stuff. So, and that's why I also think it's good to install this boost box to all the very left side, because then now I'm kind of keeping my wires. Just by one little zip tie there, I'm kind of suspending these connectors away where now it's not very easy for that connector to make its way to that. And what I want to make sure you do in this scenario when you're zip tying stuff, don't curl wires around and then end up, and don't curl wires around and then zip tie stuff where you're pulling on the wire because you never want to zip tie a wire where it's trying to pull the connectors out. So like in other words, you don't want to put a zip tie right by a connector that's pulling really hard on one wire because then it's just going to end up pulling that wire out of the connector or out of the um, crimp. And yeah, and then yeah, we we have we put holes in here. They're just kind of a pain in the butt to get to for wiring, but we have holes inside of here that'll zip tie that wiring up into there. That way it doesn't touch it. Put that in there. Snap those. There's little pieces. Let me show you, Storm. There's little. If you look in here, I don't know if you see. One, two, three. These have to slide inside. Once those slide inside, it all fits correctly. That's done. Now, all I have to do, turn the card on. You want to unpair and disconnect your phone from the screen. So I want to, and I know it's different than Apple, I'm an Android guy. Um, you want to click unpair, not just disconnect, unpair. That way your phone doesn't ever pair to it again unless you actually try to. And then you're gonna search for a Bluetooth signal called Audio Control BT1. I've already been connected to it, so there it is. But once you connect once, it'll automatically connect every time you turn the card on. Now everything, so your phone, the volume, everything. Now, one caveat. What I recommend people to do is just turn it to about 25-ish and because it's plenty loud with your phone cranked at 25 once you set it once it stays at that signal it stays at that volume level so next time I, if i turn the card off and turn back on it's still gonna be at 25 and then everything's just in my phone as soon as the cart turns on the boost box turns on my phone will automatically connect that's pretty much it i'm done so the first huge difference the boost box makes is the annoying whining hissing noise that some people have on their sound bars. So they'll, they'll hear it like when they're playing their music really quietly, or maybe not even playing music at all, they'll go and hit their throttle. There'll be a really high pitched whine from the sound bar. The noise, the people in the front can hear it, and then people back here are just bothered as all get out because it's right above their head and they can hear that noise. That was the first thing we wanted to fix. And just by adding a quality Bluetooth piece like this boost box has, that instantly eliminates the noise. The second difference is the audio quality. Yes, it's much louder, which I'll get into, but the audio quality is way better because this, the Bluetooth piece we use in this is, has aptX technology. And what all, that I could get really nerdy about this Bluetooth stuff, but all it is is aptX just allows a higher bit rate of transmission from your phone to the Bluetooth piece. And it's a higher bit rate, meaning it's just more data and it's cleaner coming through then. So when this Bluetooth piece is running through the wiring out of here to the sound bar, it sounds a heck of a lot better than a cheaper head unit does like the touchscreen on the D5. And then the volume. 
that's that's the big one. People complain because yes, the sound bar might sound like it plays loud on the factory components, but when you're driving 25 mile an hour down the road and you have the sound bar three feet behind your head, or if you have a six passenger, it's six feet behind your head, that it's behind you too. It, you can't hear it that well. Based on the output of our Bluetooth piece, it's a lot higher voltage, meaning it's giving more voltage of audio to the sound bar, so it sounds louder. The voltage coming out of the touchscreen is very, very low. That's why it doesn't sound quite as good or quite as loud. So that's one reason why it plays louder, but if someone had a way of making their sound bar play louder off of the touchscreen, I would never do that because since it's such poor quality sound coming out of that, you're just gonna blow the speakers because if you have distortion coming out of your speakers, you shouldn't make it louder because all that's gonna do is blow them. I think that plays as loud as it should based on the touchscreen. So by having all this AppDex technology and all, all the good quality audio that this, that our Blue Boost Box provides the sound bar, it allows you to play it louder and it still sound clean. I think, yes, the highs sound way cleaner, meaning the tweeters, but the, the bass actually substantially increases. So the fourth, issue we saw with our boost box and this you might not even know about this one that the soundbar only plays the left channel of music and instead of playing stereo playing left and right now let me explain what that means this is a audio test to use on youtube you just type in left right audio sound test um, but i'm going to give you a song to test too but right here it's going to show us playing the left channel then it's going to show us playing the right channel now yes i'm not saying it only plays out of the left side of the soundbar it plays out of all the speakers. The issue is if it only plays the left channel, meaning the left recorded channel. So right now, you can see the left speaker bouncing. Now watch, it goes to the right one. Nothing, literally nothing. That is a, I mean, that's another reason why our boost box, the quality is so much better because you're literally missing half of the music. Ever since the 60s, when they created stereo recordings, 99% of music has been stereo since then. If you own a D5 and you're watching this video right now, play the song A Day in the Life by the Beatles. Play it on your phone first, because if you know the song, John Lennon starts singing, and then, and he's only on the right channel of that song, because the Beatles were huge about this stereo play where there only is only one instrument or one person singing on one channel. And you, if you play them on your factory system on the D5, you don't even hear his voice. They left like a little bit of, in the, in the recording, they let it bleed over a little bit. So you might hear it faintly, but not like you should. And believe it or not, it does make a big difference. This left sub does play left channel. That right sub plays right channel. These two speakers and tweeter play left, these play right. So it actually sounds pretty good. It makes the sound sound bigger because now you got sound actually going two different ways. Last but not least, the other thing we fix is people get really annoyed that their audio shuts off as soon as they put the cart reverse. But with our boost box installed, the audio still continues to play even when you go in reverse. I've almost forgot. The thing I wanted to talk about was we have two plug and play sound systems right here, the D5100 and the D5600. 100 watt amp, two speakers, 600 watt amp, four speakers and subwoofer and power plate and maybe LED lights if you want them. And that plug, all that plugs right inside of this guy. I'm doing videos on every single product that we're releasing for the D5. I'll have a video for all of those, both of those plug and play systems. But just for a reference, I've mentioned that people get annoyed because their sound bar is right above their dang head. And now you're really gonna be able to blow their eardrums and be really annoying to these people back here because now it plays a lot better and louder and cleaner. Well, if you wanna equal the audio out, yes, our big D5600 sound system will do that, but our also our two speaker D5100 system does it as well. You can buy them after you buy the boost box, you can buy them with the boost box, it doesn't matter. So to bring this all to a close, uh, I know I went through the installation pretty quick, but it is that simple. But there will be written instructions included with the boost box if you buy it. And how you buy it is it's on our online store on our website, bacarts.com. That is in the link below, and as well as the rest of the product products we make for the D5. Our main goal with our plug and play products is to provide D5 owners with a product that is more safe wiring and works better than the average person could do it themselves. I see that there's some stuff out there of people selling systems that aren't even wired better than the average Joe could wire the stuff. And that is so anti the purpose. 
again, our, the purpose of a plug and play system is to have the average person with a golf cart that doesn't, that's not a wiring expert, that's not a wiring guru, that doesn't know how to install sound systems and all kinds of 12 volt stuff on a golf cart or vehicle, is to provide that person with a sound system or audio solution that is more safe and sounding better than what they could do themselves. If you have questions, thoughts, concerns, put the comments in the below or reach out to us at our contact information in the description below as well. And if, you want, if you're interested in some of our other products for the D5, go to our online store, which is also in the description below. Subscribe and thanks for watching.